That music has really given a false impression of what I'm doing here. I like it. So that was the uh, title sequence that I made with my brother and uh, friend Dave, who in the previous video that I, I did, that we sort of pop potched out together while we chatted shit. I can't, I can't stop playing with my hair because I can see myself in the video recording. Um, and I'm very vain. But yeah, that's the funky title sequence that I, I've ended up washing together with the title, the Your Fun Is Wrong logo stamp thing that, that, that they made during that video. Um, this is going to be, I'm going to keep this one short because I hadn't, it's been a bad couple of weeks mentally for me and I don't want to get into it because I don't generally talk too personally, but yeah, I'm not in a great headspace just in general. Um, and I haven't had a, had a couple of things planned for this, but then I just couldn't motivate myself to record either of them. Um, I really need to get back to it. I'll promise to get back to it next week. It's not promised necessarily to like my minuscule audience, but I promise to myself. Because the point of this show is for me to motivate myself to do something, keep my brain busy, keep myself busy, keep everything busy. Um, and I'm really hoping that it doesn't, it doesn't slide like it has done in the past. It's slid in the past because I've been too busy to do it, but I'm genuinely not too busy to do this now. I have nothing else going on at the moment. <laughs> That's not true. I have other, I have projects and things that I'm working on, but I don't have any like big work work. But the last couple of weeks have been a deteriorating kind of mess, and I've ended up not recording anything for this. Um, and now I'm just sort of doing it in order to have something done once a week. If I could do twice a week, I might, I would try. But if I can do once a week at least. Um, and I don't really have time to edit it because I'm doing this in the morning that I want it to go out and I don't really have time to do much of anything. Um, so this is all going to be knocked together uh, within like the an hour of me recording this. So I apologise if it's a really lame video, but it is what it is. But I figured like i will record a quick video and I'll just talk about the kind of the things that have occupied my time um, over the last month or so. We've talked about it on the podcast, the Deleted Scene podcast that we do every week that has occupied some of my time. Um, that's the deleted scene podcast um, that we've been doing for for some years now with varying platforms and varying people. We've been just it's been doing movie reviews and talking about stuff and um, interviewing filmmakers, independent filmmakers, and things, which has been which is kind of the most fun part. Um, but yeah, we wanted to try and just keep our, our our awe into the into the world of movies with that podcast, which we're currently running with the fancarpet dot com. Um, who's your one-stop shop for your movie needs, basically. Um, it's a good website, really good website. I, I recommend you check it out. With regards to distractions, I've mentioned before I've been doing Blood on the Clock Tower, and I'll put links to the server below. We have a server that we play at least twice a week, probably more. It's probably, it's probably more regularly at least three or four times a week, um, but there's kind of two times, twice a week that's scheduled. And I also do my Dungeons and & Dragons online um, and other um, role-playing games online. Um, which is quite a convenient way to do it. I was playing some of those online even before the lockdown because I've been playing with people who are scattered about the world. Um, so it's quite a convenient place to, to, to play. And I've been doing that. Um, but the reason I mentioned Blood in the Clock Tower, other than, other than because it's an awesome game that you should definitely play, um, is that the the group, I created the server and I organised it all and the group um, got together to say thank you and they pulled together and they bought me a PlayStation 4. Um, so I've been playing video games, which right? I don't often do or didn't often do before. Um, or unless I used to, a long time ago I was very into video games and into programming a bit as well um, in my teenage years. Um, which is a lifetime ago now, but uh, yeah, I used to be very video gamey, but not so much um, over the last uh, decade or so since leaving uni. But now I'm back into it. I've got the time and I've got a new machine. Um, so I've played The Last of Us, the first one, which is really good. Um, it has its faults. Uh, it's very, it's somewhat predictable and the gameplay is repetitive, but the gameplay is fun and the story is really immersive. Um, so I can see why it's so lauded. I mean, I think it's what six or seven years old now. Um, but it, I can see why it's so um, 
so revered as it is because it is the characters in the game and the story are really immersive even if the gameplay is not that exciting or not what well, is exciting but not that um explosive not that kind of like oh my gosh this is the newest thing um zombies oh shocking um yeah zombies in abandoned buildings is not that kind of wow it doesn't have a wow factor necessarily to it but the game itself is incredibly solid does everything it does everything really well uh, and has this on top of it this amazing character and stories and everything else um so i'm looking forward to playing the new one playing the last of us 2 uh, when I get a chance, I haven't bought it yet, but when I get a chance, now that I've completed the first one. And behind the curve, uh, I've also replayed Resident Evil 2, um, because I got the remastered version. I had a, the original Resident Evil 2 on my computer, the computer that died, or a different computer that died. Um, and my current PC can't run it, because I can't seem to get the backwards compatibility, the, um, what's the, what's the term? I don't know enough about computers, to be honest, to, to figure that one out. I'll get a friend if it knows computers to figure it out. Uh, but I couldn't play my old Resident Evil 2, which was one of my favourite games of all time. Um, so I got the Resident Evil 2 remastered for the PlayStation 4. Um, which is great, and I love Resident Evil 2. It's 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 a, still a fantastic game. It's lost some of the charm of Resident, of the original. The janky kind of terrible controls, cam, weird camera angles uh, of the original Resident Evils. But it is just such a good game. It's just such a I just I yeah, I love it. Um it's still one of my favourite games. And I'm currently playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Um but I've never played any Assassin's Creed games before at all. I know, weird. Um but yeah, I've not played any of the Assassin's Creed and Black Flag is the one I'm starting with. Which is, it seems like it might be an odd one to start with now that I've read up on them a little bit. Um there's not so much about the assassining. Uh this the stealth there, there's obviously the stealth and the assassinations and things like that in the game. But that kind of seems like a mini quest, like a side, a side quest, like a, like a mini game within it that you can stealth about and assassinate people, um, where mostly you're just going to be pirating, uh, which is awesome, um, and like parkouring and things about. So um, I don't know if there's going to be more assassinating later in the game, but I've not done quite so much of it so far. I've mostly just been urban exploring uh, and getting into big old fights because you can sneak around and kill people, but you're basically just as efficient at drawing a couple of swords and just fighting off a massive horde of blokes um so yeah it doesn't seem like there's that much motivation because because there's no real consequences to just murdering a bunch of cards um but i'm enjoying the 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 piratey aspects of it and the story again the story is quite good as well at least so far i don't get the weird framing device apparently this is a thing through the whole series um the, the uh, is the animus um I don't know what it had was before, and I've seen the movie, and it was dumb in that as well. Um, but yeah, the idea that you are projecting your mind back in time or into the ancestral memories. I don't know. What the fuck is it? Um, in this one, you seem to be working at this company that's creating interactive video games, I guess, or like VR experiences. So you're going through the memories of your ancestors or someone's ancestors and piecing them together in order to create a movie or a game within the game it's really stupid and unnecessary i don't get it it's come up very little so far and it's been a really pointless aside um it's a weird excuse to have why to, uh, to explain why video game things happen in a video game like you, you know you can't cross invisible barriers and you when you die you desynchronize and then resynchronize um it's just a weird framing device that seems to be designed to explain why you're playing a video game and i'm like i'm fine i understand video games i understand that i'm playing a game and that there's going to be things that aren't going to quite make sense in real world terms and it doesn't matter <laughs> so i'm not sure what the point of it is um, and i have seen some reviews that have said it is kind of stupid and it was kind of stupid in the movie the movie is really bad um but yeah it doesn't seem to have any value and i don't care what's happening in that on that side of things i don't care 
Um, I want to do my pirate thing. I just want to be that pirate guy and do my pirate thing. Um, I've also become, and this is going to probably feed into a later video on this channel, I've become completely obsessed with the channel Nukes Top 5. And it has a uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and it's kind of fed me on, it's, it's led me on to other YouTube channels as well. These about uh, ghost hunting and ghost videos. Like, And Nukes Top 5 does a lot of top five scary, scary things. Um, and he just he sources things on the internet and does his own research and edits the videos a bit bits and pieces, um, and and presents like top five ghost score on film for example. Is that's, that's a kind of a lot of them. I kind of like that. And then it shows you spooky videos either from YouTubers or from TV or from whatever um, of, of supposedly ghost score on film or aliens or monsters or whatever. Um, mostly ghosts. And I love it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why, but I I love these things. Um, I love this this spooky, unexplained. Some of them are kind of easy to explain. Some of them are kind of nothing. Especially TV ones are often often kind of like didn't really find anything. Like what's this shape or this twist of the light or this shadow? Um, yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's always nothing. Um, but it, it, I do. I still enjoy watching it. And I still and it's fed me onto some other channels um, where he sources his videos from. Um, I assume with permission to broadcast all this stuff. I assume he's he's legit. I don't know. He's been going for a number of years, so I assume he's kind of le legitimately allowed to to copy paste all these other people's footage and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy Nuke Top Five, and it's fed me onto Franco TV and and the BuzzFeed uh, Uncovered and all all these kind of other ghost hunting channels. And um, because I love ghost hunting, um, I would watch. I really like Ghost Hunters. So there's not not a lot of imagination to these some of these titles, uh, but the show Ghost Hunter. So the only the first two seasons on Amazon Prime, I think. So I've tried to find it to watch online before, um, without having to you know pirate it or whatever. I'd rather watch things legitimately if I can. Um, but yeah, I think I like the first two seasons on Amazon Prime, and then it just runs out. And I'm like, where's the rest? There's like nine seasons probably or something. I don't know exactly how many, but yeah, Ghost Hunting. I'll make a video about that at some point. Some Ghost Hunting stuff. Maybe I'll go Ghost Hunting. I don't know. I hadn't thought it through. Um, but yeah, I'm completely obsessed with these ghost hunting YouTube channels um, and, and you know, general shows. I can't stand mediums, like so, supposed psychics. Psychics. I can't stand them. So as soon as a, a show or a thing has one of them in it, I immediately turn off because they're stupid. They're bullshit con artists. Every single one of them. That's my barrier. I'm happy to believe in ghosts. I'm happy to believe that weird shadow was maybe a ghost. I'm happy to believe this person in the window maybe is a ghost. My brain can handle that but I can't do psychics. I draw the line. I draw the line at psychic mediums. The other thing we got with the PlayStation 4 was um, a Now TV subscription for two months of Now TV subscription for two months. Um, which is going to come to an end um, in the next few weeks. But uh, yeah, we've been binging the crap out of Now TV, and we're probably going to keep Now TV because it's actually pretty good. And there's there's quite a lot on there that we haven't got around to seeing yet. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been and I've been binging. I've taken the opportunity to binge the um, Arrowverse shows, so the DC TV shows that are in the Arrow Flash universe, and um, that began with Arrow and obviously came on to Flash, and then uh, I'm guess I'm guessing Legends of Tomorrow was after that, and then Supergirl kind of got folded in, but it wasn't the start part of it. It's a bit of a muddle, the DC TV universe, but they've pulled it together and really managed to make it work quite well. Uh, and I've just got to the Crisis on Infinite Earths, the last crossover thing that they they did with the main shows of Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and then also a whole bunch of extra things that have appeared um cameos glow i won't spoil any of the cameos for anyone that hasn't seen it yet um but it's cameo crazy uh, even for things that i didn't realize were dc properties um other tv shows and things there is a tendency with the dc shows with the exception of legend of tomorrow the tendency of the dc shows to descend into hero character firing some kind of colored light beam at villain character who's firing some kind of colored light beam back and that's just kind of just the powers just boo and that's that happens way more often than it should like the two light beams clash and then fight tug of war that's happening way too much dc in your tv shows you, sh you need to look into that legends of tomorrow is really good legends of tomorrow um is very imaginative it's it's a, a team of characters traveling through time and space going to different 
meeting you know historical figures and doing wacky random things hunting aliens and monsters and magic and all these things and so legend Legend tomorrow is really interesting because it's it's wildly different um every kind of it it, it, the story varies a lot um but yeah a lot most of the other shows do often descend into good beam of energy versus evil beam of energy um too much and it's there and that everyone's powers are a little bit interchangeable like they don't always use them in the most effective ways um which is a shame but i still like the characters generally speaking i still enjoy the the shows i'm not watching flash because i can't stand flash i liked flash season one flash season one is brilliant season two was okay and then it just kind of went downhill and i gave up on flash um, but we're currently watching me and kaylee are currently watching succession which is really good um, it's really dark uh, and it's really um, it's a lot of it's a it's a it's a, an ensemble character piece although arguably there is the main character is um, Kendall um, but it is more, a bit more of an ensemble piece of these collection of quite terrible human beings <laughs> like they're likable in their own way but they're largely bad people um in some means so some not necessarily always by their own making but they're they're and with brian cox as the head of the family but it's basically about a family run business that seems to be kind of fox news and disney combined and probably a few other references that i'm not quite getting but that seems to be the primary so it's fox and disney combined um which are they now does, fox, does disney own fox i don't even know anymore run by brian cox the patriarch of the family uh who is an absolutely deliciously evil human being <laughs> like he's a wonderfully awful person um who just kind of who, who just dominates any scene that he's in um brian cox does and and you know, i'm not i haven't got to the end of season two yet so uh, there's still a lot of questions unanswered um but yeah he's it's a really really good show but it is i will say it is dark and it is um quite intense in that that in that kind of there's not a lot of likability to the characters, but they are compelling to watch. We also finally played Arkham Horror, the card game, which I got for my birthday last month. Um, and it was it was fun. We played the just the intro scenario with the base setup, as it suggests in the book. It has a kind of, this is your first game, you should play it with these, these cards and these this setup uh, and do this. And, and yeah, then you will, you will learn the game, essentially. So we played the opening scenario with the base setup, and it is... Uh, it was really good, but it's really hard. We didn't, didn't know the games. So we didn't know what was best to do. Should we run away from these monsters? Should we be fighting to the death with these monsters? Should we be trying to explore as quickly as possible? Should we be trying to turn over the cards as quickly as possible? Which we learned that we should definitely try and progress through this the story as quickly as possible because you'll hit a snag. And then, because there's basically there's a deck of goods, the positive side of the story and the negative side of the story. And they're slowly rotating and you need to get through the positive side as quickly as possible because the negative side is kind of on a timer and eventually you'll hit a snag in that positive deck and suddenly the negative deck will start to catch up um, and you might feel like hey, hey we're like two or three cards ahead of the negative deck in the good deck we're doing really well but then suddenly you'll be stuck and suddenly these cards will just cycle through really disturbingly quickly and you'll be nearer defeat than you you realized um, so we kind of got you got we got used to the gameplay. We'll probably try and campaign that through because it's a good two-player game. Um, it's kind of why why I wanted it so that me and Katie could play it while we were still stuck at home. Sorry, I've my depression has kind of caused this video to happen <laughs> um, rather than like something a bit more polished. What have you been doing? Why not tell me in the comments? Recommend things. I recommend Nuke's top five. Uh, this is uh, Ghost top five ghost video things i basically scroll through and just find all the ghost ones and i watch those they're mostly ghosts it seems to be um ghost is what interests me for some reason actually the tv show i'm writing is largely about ghosts as well i just have a ghost obsession i've got to get some kind of ghost hunter person to chat with me on this show that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna, I'm gonna endeavor to get a ghost hunter like a proper one i'm taking the piss uh, on this show to chat with me about their ghost hunting. I would love that. That's genuinely made me kind of happy. The idea of that. 
Uh, what what wonders we will see. Cool. Well, I better wrap this up. Um, it's weird when you're off script and, and no plan and you just kind of have to then just have to figure out where the end of what you're saying is. Um, so let's just say it's here. Check out all the things I mentioned. I'll put links to everything in the description below, um, including the Deleted Scene podcast, which is my podcast about movies and stuff. Um, we've got loads. Of, we've had loads of interviews in the lockdown uh, and before that as well with um, independent filmmakers, and they're all really good. Or people that work in the industry in some way, and and there's some really good interviews in there, um, and they're a lot of fun to listen to. So I do advise you check that out. if you're at all interested in film and filmmaking. Check those out because um, there's some people who wouldn't not, you know don't normally get interviewed on things. They often you know we get to chat to them and things like that. Um, so it's cool. And check out Fitter Films, which is my old YouTube channel, sort of my company production names youtube channel flitter films um, where you can watch some old um, web series and things that i made and am occasionally in i wonder how this video is going to turn out okay i guess we'll find out the end